Good morning. What another gorgeous morning with the sun shining in the windows here in the chapel. I'm Janet Brenneman, and I'm delighted to be sharing with you this morning. Thank you to Charlotte Lefevre for the lovely music, including This Is My Father's World, which she already played to begin this time of worship together, and Park Lefevre at the sound desk for getting us to you connected. Yesterday, we saw the eclipse of the sun by the moon, maybe through clouds. I don't think that I really saw it, but I hope some of you did. Maybe we just read or watched or listened to the news about it. It's something which won't happen again in these lower 48 states until 20 44. That's really only 20 years from now, but I would be 94 if I would make it till then. That's telling you something. And you can calculate your own age in 20 years. In addition to this extraordinary event, we are in the midst of a gorgeous spring. I look out one window at our house and I see yellow forsythia, which I brought a bit of it here this morning, which I know I have to trim, but for now it's glorious, a glorious spread of sunny yellow. It cheers me up, and I'm not even down in the dumps. I see brand new tiny green leaves on the spirea, which will soon be covered with tiny white flowers and then white snowy petals all over the back patio. I see bluebirds flying in and out of the bluebird box, and pansies brighten up the big flower pot on the front porch. Plus, a duck is on her nest full of eggs right outside one of the garage windows, which I can peer into several times a day. I don't want to miss those tiny ducklings hatching and walking down the road with their mallard mom. And Mr. Mallard is almost always standing for a short while each morning on the walk nearby watching. Recently, I've seen the red-bellied woodpecker at the bird feeder. Bluebirds are checking out the bluebird box and eating the dried worms in the feeder. And surely the sparrows are everywhere, getting whatever they can. But we can't begrudge them because God has every sparrow numbered. And if God knows the number of sparrows, of how much more worth are we? The trees might look dead from a distance, but if we get up close, we see that the buds are fattening up. The spirea outside our sunroom window has lovely tiny green leaves and will soon be hanging full of tiny white flowers. And later, the porch will seem to be covered with flowery snowflake-like petals. Feathery, puffy clouds float by with a glorious blue sky beyond. And somewhere in the far, far distance, a bright sun illuminates everything and creates lovely shadows, except when eclipsed by the moon or the clouds or the rain. I've been thinking, but probably most of you have been thinking about all the beauty which surrounds us this spring in tiny detail and great grandeur. And the first words of Psalm 24 come to mind. This Psalm celebrates the sovereign rule of the Lord over Israel and was perhaps originally used as a liturgy 
of festal entrance when the whole congregation of Israel came with David as he brought the new ark of God's presence into Jerusalem. This was then repeated regularly in the Feast of Tabernacles. I'll read verses 1 through 7 of Psalm 24. I think this psalm begins emphatically. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. I lost my place. <laughs> Everything is the Lord's, the world, the seas, even the tiny flowers and all who live in this world, those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false, these will receive blessings from the Lord. The beauty of God's creation surrounds us, and we often, if you're like me, don't even notice much less offer daily gratitude to God for everything around us, even the insignificant tiny things like the tiny new green spirea leaves or the lovely bright yellow forsythia petals or the common sparrows. We consider them ordinary and inconsequential not even a sparrow, which I read is the second most populous bird of the world, falls to the ground without God noticing, according to Jesus in Matthew 10. Let's live today with keen observation of a few of the details that stand out to you in God's amazing creation around us. And let's give great thanks, and share them with another. Let's pray. Gracious God, you have given your very self, your Son, our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, in addition to and on top of all the glorious and gorgeous beauty that we've already mentioned, and much more. We are surrounded by your presence and your beauty. We are so grateful. Draw us closer to yourself and to each other, and grant us peace. Let our hearts burn within us, and open our eyes to see you, present with us and within us, and everywhere around us. Walk with us today and every day. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, I'm going to walk away anyway. Hopefully I'm off the mic too. <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte. That music was beautiful. Thank you for yours. That was, it was really springy. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I love music. Careful.